Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be continuing our survival game series and we'll be implementing some uh, enhanced UI features. So, just to show an example of what I mean, if I press play here, uh, I'll go into full screen mode here, and you can see at the top left there I've changed up our uh, health, stamina, hunger, thirst, and our two temperature values uh, to now work with these kind of uh, cooler widgets, I guess, um, some cooler you know, UI images. Uh, on the right, of course, you can still see we have our text displaying our world temp and body temp, and that was more for debugging purposes while I did this. Um, but I'd also like to, uh, you know, potentially we can look at changing up the way we display the time of day as well. Uh, so if you guys have any ideas on that, I'd love to hear it. Um, you know, the, the question being, how should we display the day? Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go find our textures or you know our, our UI icons, I guess, that we're gonna use for our our HUD. Okay, so um, what I recommend doing is going to visit good old Google Images and looking up you know similar things that I've done here. So for finding a water drop, you know, make sure to include the word icon. Uh, it definitely helps you know narrow down your results to better options. Okay, uh, for the stamina. Right, I did this running man kind of icon. Okay, I think I did something like that or this maybe. Um, then the thermometer, I'm pretty sure I used like this one or something like that. Okay, so you can search the same things that I search: heart icon, chicken leg icon, etc. Okay, now um, I'm not going to show in this video how I did the editing uh, in Photoshop. It's just really some very basic Photoshop stuff because uh, I'm not really an expert at it. But you know, I know enough to. Uh, find my way around. So if you guys want to see that, uh, just let me know in the comments and you know I'll be sure to upload that video. But um, anyways, I will also be providing these images for you, like all the edited images, so if you want to follow along with those, you definitely can. So anyways, so let's assume you have all your images, you're ready to go, so let's, you know, what do we do next, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go into our UI folder here, and I'm going to right click, create a new folder, and I'm going to call materials okay go in here right click and create another one called textures now I'm creating a materials folder inside the UI instead of these materials because uh, you know the UI materials they're they're very specific right they're only ever used with UI so um, I guess it doesn't really make sense um, to kind of group them at least in my opinion to group them with all the other materials that we'll have in the game like for models and uh, characters etc so inside of this materials and textures we're gonna import a whole bunch of assets so I'm gonna say import okay so like I said I've made a whole bunch of things here and these will all be available for you um, but let's see here so I'm gonna go ahead and import most of our PSDs here um, import this linear gradient this radial gradient uh, these this progress uh, bar here this progress ring. Um, let's see, what else do we want? I think we want the ring mask here. You could do the PSD, maybe. What's the file size? The file sizes are another thing to consider. Let's actually do all the PNGs if we can. Um, I'll do the running person. Okay, and get the water drop. And now for the thermometer, we're gonna get these two. Okay, and then I wanna use the I'm going to use the thermometer uh, background style, okay, or styled, because that has like a little bit of a um, kind of a glossiness applied to it, so it'll work a little work a little nicer or look a little nicer at least with our thermometers. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just hit open, and that should import everything we need. All right, so we got a whole bunch of stuff here. So uh, now we need to format these correctly or set the textures up correctly. So we'll open the chicken leg first. Here's our chicken leg. Okay, looks kind of cool, I think. Um, and we're gonna go change this texture group to UI. Save it, perfect. If we look in our channels, right, you should see that there's already an alpha inside of it. Okay, just to show that. Uh, so we'll do the heart next. Not sure why it's opening everything really small like that. That was a little weird. Sorry, just testing it out. Okay, so with the heart, make this a UI element as well. Um, we'll skip the gradient for a second and open this one. Make this UI. Okay. Make this next one here UI as well. All right. Uh, the ring mask. 
Okay, gonna make it UI. And just one thing I double check is uh, make sure that it also has the alpha on here. Because I think one of them in the folder that I provided uh, might not. So just make sure you're importing the correct one. So we have a running person, which will again be UI. Thermometer background. So this was the kind of the glossiness I was talking about. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's kind of got this bit of a styled look. Okay, so it looks a little nicer than just like a flat white color. So we'll change that to UI as well. Okay, take our thermometer fill. Again, <laughs> UI. Okay, and our thermometer fill blue should be UI as well. While we're at it, let's rename this one to fill red. Okay, last one here is our UI water drop, not skybox. We want UI. Okay, so I'm just going to close everything right now real quick. All right, there we go, and then we'll save it all. Now, we also need to do the two gradients that we've got here. So I'll open up this linear gradient. Okay, and you can see, uh, you, you might be able to see this in the, you know, in the video, but if it's too poor quality, then you can't. But um, basically, there's all these little lines running across it, okay? And this kind of affects how our gradient, uh, you know, goes. Like, ultimately, it doesn't affect the values necessarily, but it affects how smooth it is. So what we want to do is we want to change the compression settings here to grayscale. Okay, so this will increase the uh, resource size, but it makes it like infinitely smoother. Okay, it looks a lot nicer. Now, some other things we can do to this, uh, we'll change it to UI again. Okay, because we, you know, we're using it with the UI. Uh, and then we'll untick sRGB here. Okay. And then uh, one thing that we can can actually do, and you know, we won't see any negative results from this. So it's imported at a very high, you know, resolution for a gradient. Okay, so we could actually take the LOD bias and like bump it way down, you know, 64 by 64, or even lower if you want, um, and that would really cut down on the resource size while still maintaining that nice, you know, smooth look. Um, you know, just just something you can do, I guess. Okay, um, and yeah, it will still work exactly as intended, so which is nice. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with our radial gradient. Again, why is it doing this? This is strange to say the least. Whatever, okay. So again, you'll probably notice there's all these little lines. So again, make this grayscale, untick sRGB, change it to, oh, I keep doing that, UI. And then again, I'm gonna change this LED bias so that it's only a 64 by 64. Okay, so save that. All right, so we've got all of our textures. Now we need to create the actual materials that we're gonna use uh, for our UI elements, okay? So what we're gonna do for that is uh, we're gonna go ahead and right click, create a material, and we'll call this M underscore, uh, let's call it progress ring, okay? Because we're gonna be using you know rings instead of progress bars, okay? So open that up. So the first thing that we'll do is we're gonna change the material domain to user interface. And that will automatically shorten this way up. And then we'll change the blend mode here to translucent so we can have the opacity here available for us. Uh, next, what we need to do is we're going to add a texture. So I just held T and clicked there. You can also look for texture sample, if I can spell. I can't spell, apparently. So just look for a texture sample. Um, and that will add the same thing. Just I like to use my shortcuts. It speeds things up. OK, so we're going to take the um, the one. Well, first, we need to give it a texture. So we'll take this, and we're going to search for a radial gradient for this one. OK, so it should look something like this right now. All right. Um, and since it's, you know, since it's grayscale, and we only want the values from one of the channels, we'll just take this, and we're going to run it through an if. OK, so an if statement. Uh, essentially how if statements work in material editors or in the material editor uh, is it will pick one of these values okay one of these three values based on uh, how it evaluates a and b okay so if a is greater than b um, then it'll pick you know this output uh, if a is equal to b it'll pick this one if a is less than b then it picks that one okay so very very simple okay um, now for the B here, we're going to actually create a scalar parameter, and we're going to call this alpha, all right? Because ultimately, we're going to be using this, like all the functionality that we'll add here, uh, we're going to use it to drive our opacity. So the alpha value uh, will be plugged into our B, and 
we're going to use the values of our gradient here, which go from, uh, I believe, 0 to 1. Right? I, I, I believe that's right. Black is 0, and then you know, white is 1. So to go you know, all the way around. Um, and so as it evaluates, right, we'll tell it to pick either uh, you know, one value or another value. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add some constant uh, 1 floats. So we can either do that by um, looking for a constant like that, or you can hold the 1 key and click, and that'll create one. Okay, so we need two. Now this first one uh, is 0. Okay, and we're going to plug that into A is greater than B, and I'll explain this in a second. And now for the second one, we're going to make it a value of 1, and we're going to plug that into both of these. Okay, so now what this does is, um, you know, it's it's checking, it's comparing the 0 to 1 value of our radial gradient here to the 0 to 1 value of our alpha. And then um, based on that, you know, it's picking either, or it's it's deciding to either not show any color or, you know, no, no, no opacity, or it'll show, you know, full opacity. Okay, and that'll be more uh, avail, or easier to understand in a second once we add the texture. So let's go ahead and hold T, add another texture. And for this, uh, we're going to search for our ring. We want the ring mask. Okay, so it should show up. It should look all white, but that's fine. We're going to drag out and do a multiply. Okay, and I'm going to hold control and drag this down to B because I don't like to cross wires as much as I can, you know, avoid it. And I'll plug everything in like this. Okay, so now if we hook this into opacity, uh, we still don't see anything yet, but that's because we don't have any color. So for the color itself, I'm just going to use a constant. So I'm going to hold 1 and click, plug this in, and I'm going to change it to 1, which is white. Okay, and now provided we did everything right, oh, that's right, alpha is currently 0. So if we set this to 1, we should be able to see the ring. Okay, so there we go. We can see here's our ring. Um, now to just kind of demonstrate how this works, right? Um, or exactly what it's doing. All right, so currently, um, you know, the end, the end of the uh, the gradient here, which is you know 100% white, so it's a value of one. That is evaluating as one is equal to one, so it's picking a full opacity. Okay. So now, as we decrease our alpha, you'll see. Um, well, I guess it's not updating in real time, but you'll see that it starts to decrease our stuff. Okay, and that's great. That's kind of what we want. Now I will say it's not a perfect gradient. Um, you know, I I made it, and it's it's not it's not as perfect as I'd like it to be. For example, if I look at 0.5, um, well, I guess 0.5 looks pretty good, but it seems a little off at points. Like 0.25 is a little off, as is 0.75, I believe. So um, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really noticeable, uh, but you know, it is something to consider, I guess. Okay. All right, so awesome. We've got that material set up. Now we're going to close this, and we're going to create one more for this video, and then we'll be, um, and then we'll we'll continue in the next one. So we'll call this M underscore thermometer. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Now we can actually copy a lot of the same code from here. Let's actually take it all and copy it all. Um, and let's see. We'll go to. You know what? I think. Hmm. Now that I think about it, we might actually be able to just repurpose this into one master material, but for the time being, we'll just go with this. Okay, so we'll put it all in here, change the material domain to user interface, make it translucent again, we'll plug this in, okay, we'll get rid of this value, because uh, we're going to change up a little bit of, you know, kind of how, what texture we're using. So we'll change this to our thermometer, and we'll do the red one by default, plug that in. I don't know why it's showing up weird like that, but it is. Okay, I'm going to move this down, change up the way these are connected, because I don't like crossing wires, and then we'll change the alpha value to say 1. So there we go. It should look something like that right now. Okay, so if we save that, let's actually, let's go check really quick. Maybe we can, this might be something we can do. If we just plug this in, I wonder if it works the same. Oh yeah, it works perfectly fine. So. Yeah, let's let's actually do that. Okay, so we're just gonna take this one material, and this will be our you know master material. Okay, so we'll right click on this. I'm gonna say convert to parameter. 
I'm going to call this uh, color slash mask. Okay, and I'm going to right click on this one, convert it to a parameter, call this guy gradient. Okay, so we'll save it all and close that. We can actually, we'll just delete everything from here right now. Whatever, save it as we close it, and we'll delete it. So let's right click on this guy, create a material instance. Um, let's see, we'll call this M, MI, let's call it MI for material instance, underscore progress ring. Okay, and we'll let's rename this guy really quick to just M underscore, uh, I don't know, UI progress. Okay. So now what we can do is we can take this material now and just create instances of it and change up uh, you know what um, what textures we use. So we'll right click, create another one, call this MI underscore thermom. What do I want to call this? Thermom at tur red. Okay, open this guy up. And let's go ahead and just change the color mask here. And we'll change it to our thermometer fill red. So it should look like that right now. Uh, the only thing we want to change the gradient now to that linear gradient because we want it to fill from, uh, you know, uh, from bottom to top or top to bottom, right? So we'll go ahead and save that. All right. And let's see. Yeah, that's good for that one. We'll just duplicate this one. Okay. And we'll call it uh, blue. So MI thermometer blue. And we'll just pick the blue fill. Okay, perfect. There we go. We're good to go. All right, so we'll go ahead and just call that a day uh, for right now. In the next video, we'll add all of our widgets and then implement the functionality and get rid of the horrific <laughs> progress bars we have right here. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.